This video is a review of the first law and enthalpy chapter in chemical thermodynamics. So the first law of thermodynamics says that the energy change of the universe is zero. The energy of the universe is constant. The universe is defined as some system, which we is our system of interest, and it, everything else in the universe is the surroundings. So the energy change of the system plus the energy change of the surroundings must equal zero because that is the energy change of the universe, which must be constant. We can then define pressure volume work. We have, <clears throat> for example, some gas inside of a cylinder, and it can push up against some external environment and do work on it, or it can be compressed and have work done on it by the environment. And the work, uh, which is which the system does is defined as minus the integral from the initial volume to the final volume of the external pressure at every step along the way integrated with respect to volume dv. We can define state and path functions in terms of whether or not they depend on the path in which it took to uh, create a thermodynamic state. So things like internal energy, u, our path, our state functions, because they do not depend on how you got there, they only depend on what the value of your state properties are. And that's indicated by an exact differential D um, here for our energy. Um, path functions, work and heat, are both path functions, and they do depend upon the path which is taken uh, during a system uh, change. So. The state alone is not enough to specify work and heat. Those values are energy changes which occur along a specific path. So in terms of the first law of thermodynamics, we can write it in a differential form as du, the, the regular d, equals dq plus dw, noting the inexact differentials for the path functions. Then in the integrated form, we have delta u, our total change in energy from state one to state two is equal to heat plus work. We can look at <clears throat> heat and work in isothermal and adiabatic processes. Um, this value x here, which I'm defining in this table, is equal to number of moles times gas constant times temperature times natural log of the final volume divided by the initial volume of our system during whatever expansion or compression event we had. Um, in adiabatic processes, the heat involved in the system is zero. There's no heat given in. So the work done is minus x, and the change in internal energy is the sum of those two, which is minus x. In isothermal processes, the temperature stays the same. So we have the work done is minus x, but we include, we include an amount of heat plus x that cancels out the amount of energy we lost through work, such that our internal energy and thus our temperature of the gas stays constant. We can look at heat and work in terms of statistical mechanics and our partition functions. We have that the change in work done in a reversible process is the sum over all the states of their probabilities times how their energy levels change as we do whatever work we do. And for heat, it's the sum of the energy levels times the change in their probabilities as the, as the work occurs. So work involves the change in the energy levels, whereas heat involves the change in their probabilities. We can then define enthalpy, which is defined as internal energy U plus pressure times volume. And whenever you have the change in volume for a process being zero, a constant volume process, the change in internal energy is equal to the heat during that process, during that constant volume process. But we want to know what the heat is during a constant pressure process. And due to the setup of how we define enthalpy during a constant pressure process, enthalpy is equal to the heat uh, done on the, the heat the system absorbs during that process. The heat capacity is how the system responds with with fluctuations in temperature. So the derivative of the internal energy with respect to temperature at constant volume is equal to the constant volume heat capacity, which is a function of temperature. And you also have the constant pressure heat capacity, which analogously to these set up here, 
we have the partial derivative of enthalpy with respect to temperature at constant pressure is the constant pressure heat capacity. And those two vary <clears throat> by the gas constant, the molar constant pressure heat capacity minus the molar constant volume heat capacity is equal to the gas constant. So our constant pressure heat capacity is slightly higher than our constant volume heat capacity. Um, heat is absorbed or released during some phase transition process. During fusion, the melting of a given solid to a liquid, um, there has to be enough heat uh, imported into the system in order to overcome the molecular interactions. And that heat is, during a constant pressure process, the enthalpy. So you have some enthalpy or heat of fusion. And similarly, going from liquid to gas, you have the enthalpy of vaporization. And in between these transitions, the change in enthalpy, so the molar enthalpy at some given temperature 2, the minus enthalpy at given temperature 1, the change in enthalpy between two temperatures is the integral from those two temperatures of their constant pressure heat capacity integrated with respect to temperature. <clears throat> uh, we can define enthalpy for a chemical reaction. If the enthalpy of a reaction is greater than zero, then it is endothermic. If the enthalpy of a reaction is less than zero, it is exothermic. Endothermic reactions absorb heat from the surroundings. Exothermic reactions release heat to the surroundings. The enthalpy and the standard enthalpy for a reaction is equal to the sum over all of the products of their stoichiometric coefficient times their standard enthalpy of formation for the given product. Those are all positive values. And then you subtract from all the reactants their stoichiometric coefficient times their standard enthalpy of formation for the given reactant. The standard enthalpy of formation is defined as zero for elements in their standard states, but for a given molecule, for example, if we have some XAYB molecule, which is a gas, its standard, standard enthalpy of formation would be defined as the enthalpy of reaction going from um, a moles of an X solid plus B over 2 moles of Y2 gas going to this hypothetical molecule as defined by this reaction. <clears throat>